Oh, well, hello there. Uh, welcome to our church family news. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Ez. I'm the Associate Minister here at St. Luke's Liverpool. And here joining us as our guest for this week, we have our youth ministry team. Can you say hi to everyone at church, youth leaders? Hi. hi. Well, you know, not at church. You guys are all at home right now, um, but hopefully we'll be uh, back soon. Um, youth leaders, uh, we're, we're supposed to be meeting in person. Usually we meet um, at the start of each term, uh, just to talk about the next term, but uh, we can't do that. We were supposed to have birthday cake uh, today uh, because Anna, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Anna. Thank you. <laughs> How did you celebrate, Anna? Um, I had two picnics. Cool. With friends. Nice. <laughs> Oh, happy birthday. I'm sad that we can't uh, celebrate with you. Would have done a whole hoo-ha for you. And as well for Brielle, uh, Brielle's birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday for tomorrow. What's your plans for tomorrow, Brielle? I have absolutely no idea what the plans are for tomorrow. I'm hoping Nick has a big fun day planned, but uh, if not, that's okay. I'm happy to just chill. Awesome. Well, by the time this airs, uh, please message Brielle and find out what happened <laughs> on her birthday. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that'll be fun uh, for you and you can celebrate in, in semi-isolation. Now yeah. I've uh, got these uh, youth leaders here uh, to talk about something, but before that, I thought I'd update you a bit on uh, returning to church, really, uh, returning to physical ga gatherings. Uh, no doubt you've already um, seen on the news uh, the roadmap uh, to restrictions lifting, and uh, that's so good news for us because as a church, um, I don't know if you know the word church, actually doesn't mean a, a building or a program of some sort. A church is an assembly, a gathering of people, because God is in the business of gathering people. That's how he, he saves us in Christ. And so uh, we are the type of people who belong together. We are made to be here together forever and ever. Um, if you know Home and Away, a um, bit of a blast from a past. Although I just heard from the youth leaders that Home and Away is not dead. Anyway, we are made to be together. We really are. And in fact, the local church is a microcosm of heavenly realities. We are a reflection of what uh, is happening in the heavenly realms and will happen one day in the new creation. Church is not just something that happens week by week. It is who we are as the people of God. And so coming back to physically gather is so important for us. You know, at the start of the pandemic, people asked questions about, oh, maybe we can transition all our churches online. It's so much more convenient. But I think everyone by now is feeling that that is not enough, is it? It's not enough to sustain a Christian because we are not meant to be together, uh, to be alone. Uh, we are meant to be together and we are meant to be serving and equipping each other. Um, Ephesians, we've been studying that. And let me quote from Ephesians right now. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3 says this, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And this unity in Christ, so we've been studying about how he saved us in Christ, how he's brought us together, the two becoming one, God and man and man and man, that we are meant to be serving each other, encouraging each other, making every effort and I would think that means uh, physically gathering as well. So it's been sad that we haven't been able to do that for quite a long time. It's just not the same. But uh, we have had to uh, submit to our government, right, and uh, willingly uh, submit to our government. And our government has been, um, I think, uh, pretty, pretty marvellous in terms of uh, trying to protect us, uh, trying to make sure that uh, our community uh, stays safe in all this. Uh, of course, Romans 13 uh, tells us how our attitude as Christians should be to the government anyway. Romans 13 says this, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And so I'm very, very thankful uh, for all the restrictions. Even though they have hindered things, uh, I'm very, very thankful that God has placed our authorities over us uh, to give us uh, such such uh, precise rules, I guess, uh, to make sure that we keep our, our communities uh, safe and and that this doesn't blow out of proportion more than it already has. But now that there is a roadmap to recovery that's been released, it's it's also obvious, I think, that even though there are some things that are legal to do, 
it's not quite as simple to just simply uh, come back. Uh, COVID is still a threat, even at 70%, 80% vac double vaccinations. Uh, it's still a problem, isn't it? Um, and especially with the news about 70%, uh, that will probably happen in a couple of weeks. Actually, I think uh, the date is 11th of October, which means the first Sunday would be the 17th of October. Even the 70% kind of uh, restrictions uh, are still uh, prohibitive, I think, of a true gathering of God's people. Uh, you see, at 70%, only fully vaccinated people uh, can come to church if church opens. And as a church for all people, uh, we do want to be balking at anything uh, that excludes uh, people. Um, and we want all people uh, to be able to gather together. And so that's something we're thinking about. And also another thing that probably you've noticed is there's so much talk about uh, people's rights, people's entitlements. Uh, whereas I think as, as Christians, we should be not thinking about our rights, but our responsibility. And in particularly our responsibility to, to love, to love one another, to love our neighbor. Um, later on in Romans 13, after talking about submission to government, it talks about this. This is from verse 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And so I think it's clear from what God is saying to us here that we are not to just look at the legal aspects of things, and we definitely have been thinking very much about that. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've had regional uh, diocesan meetings uh, with bishops, with HR people, medical people, legal teams, uh, just talking about all the issues surrounding our comeback uh, to gatherings. And it's very obvious that we're not just supposed to think about the legal things, but doing the loving thing. And questions should pop into our mind, like how do we love the unvaccinated who cannot or are not willing to come back to church for now? How could do we love the unvaccinated who will be coming at 80%? How do we love the vaccinated who will turn up to church? How do we love the vaccinated who, who are still not willing to come back to church? And so as we think through these things, uh, we don't have any clear plans at the moment, but we are still thinking through them. Uh, and so could you please be praying for myself? Could you please pray for the wardens and our parish councillors that as we meet to discuss uh, how our church will get back together again, that, that we will honour God and that we'll be wise and we'll be compassionate and we'll be understanding. Of course, uh, we would love your input as well. Uh, if you have something to share, something that would help us uh, make good decisions, uh, wise decisions and love, uh, uh, love motivated decisions, uh, please uh, just contact me and, and I'd love to be able to chat to you about that. But I do want to make sure that we don't think that before gathering together as a church that this whole time has been wasted. You know, Isaiah 55 says this, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You see, even though we've been restricted and isolated, God's word is not bound. And we've had God's word preached in many contexts uh, throughout this time in lockdown. We've had small groups running and we've had kids online and we've had youth online. And so I'm very thankful to our youth leaders um, for for keeping on going online, Zoom has been hard for them, but they've been serving our youth brilliantly. And I'm particularly thankful for Simon. He's been the one who's coordinated our team while I've had to step out of uh, directly overseeing our youth ministry. So thank you so much, Simon, for doing that uh, for us. But I do want to hear about how God has been working, how they've uh, seen God working, and so we can celebrate uh, together. And so Start off with, uh, we'll go anti-alphabetical because I know Anna and Brielle, uh don't like to go first all the time. Wes, 
Do you want to tell us uh, one way in which uh, you've seen God at work in the past couple of months while we've been in lockdown? Yeah, sure. Um, I've been very encouraged um, in the last term or so. I'm not entirely sure how long we've been in lockdown um, about how um, the youth have been getting alongside each other, um, especially when it comes to um, encouraging each other to read the Bible and even meeting up with each other outside of um, youth online to read the Bible together mm-hmm. um, and really to get alongside each other and to keep on living life together, even though they can't be together physically. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's amazing. Youth reading the Bible outside of church time. It's got to be the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, Simon, how about you? What have you seen? Yeah, so I, I remember uh, last year during the first lockdown, um, uh, you know, like youth online is hard, Zoom, nobody likes Zoom. Um, and I know last year, I think, you know, people were quiet. People didn't really want to come along and especially like kind of towards the end of the term as the lockdown was lifting, uh, we saw, uh, well, I saw in my Bible study at least, people coming kind of less frequently. Um, so this term, I've just been really encouraged to see how consistent and how like reliable the youth have been. Um, and, you know, they're not just sitting there quietly kind of distracted doing something else on their screen. They're actually eager every week to kind of get into God's word and to, you know, really understand what it means for them. Um, mm. Just been really encouraging to see. Mm. That's awesome. How about for you, Sean? What have you seen? Yeah, so firstly, I'd just like to say how encouraging it is um, to see the youth turning up uh, every week, uh, even if it's hard and over Zoom. Um, but uh, particularly, there's been a, a one of the youth uh, in my small group um, who's uh, been coming almost uh, every week for this uh, last uh, term and a bit. And, yeah, it's just been good to see them become more and more attentive um, each week and uh, interacting more with the study and uh, even if it's hard and uh, some of the others are struggling, it's good that, um, yeah, that this youth is uh, always able to keep them on track and even in the small groups and um, uh, when we do prayers together, um, they've started to uh, pray not only for themselves but for the others around them. And, yeah, it's just been really encouraging to see. Mm, awesome. How about you, Maribel? What have you seen? Yeah, I've been really encouraged by uh, the youth that have come along every week. I know for some of the youth it's been really hard to come on Zoom because they've got lots of Zoom for school as well. Mm. And so I've just been really encouraged that they've come anyway despite the fact that it's difficult. Uh, and I've also been encouraged by a particular youth who – We've started some prayer groups and um, those have been really encouraging. And this particular youth has used that time to, you know, um, bring up prayer points for other people or worldly issues rather than for themselves. And that's been really encouraging to see. Mm, That's always so cool to see when people pray. They don't go straight to themselves, but for others, that's that's huge. Thank you for sharing that, Mirabel. Uh, Jess, how about you? Yeah, I've been really encouraged um, by the fellowship we've had with the youth over this last term. Um, For our senior youth in particular, it's been a really challenging term. Not only have they dealt with the lockdowns that we've all dealt with, um, but they've also had to manage and prepare for some pretty major exams uh, for their HSC year. Mm. Um, And some of the youth have been really open um, during Youth Online about how hard that's been for them and the struggles that they face. and it's been really great to see them bring these things before God in prayer during our prayer group time. Um, but what's been especially encouraging is just the fact that despite all this upheaval, um, they still turn up to youth online week after week, uh, despite how tired they are, because um, they want to share in fellowship with each other. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's been a great privilege to see them spurring one another on and encouraging each other to depend on God for everything. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Jess. Uh, how about you, Brielle? What have you got? 
Yeah. Uh, so um, I look after the nine and tens with Wes, uh, which is a, an absolute pleasure. Um, I find that um, they're kind of in this awkward age between being seniors at school, but also still being juniors. And um, they're trying to figure out, I guess, their identity and who they are. And um, there's one particular youth who um, has openly shared about her struggles in the past about reading the Bible and um, putting God as her priority. And uh, she's used this lockdown as kind of a restart button. Um, and she's found that uh, actually starting her day by opening God's word and even just reading a small passage, uh, meditating on it through the day, thinking about it at different times. Uh, and then at night she wants to pray before she goes to bed. Like I struggle to do that sometimes and she's, you know, been consistent with it. And uh, I've just been incredibly overwhelmed with how, uh, how much effort she's put into that and how much conviction she has in that. Um, in fact, a lot of the youth, um, I'm finding they're all kind of finding these ways to glorify God, even in their own little setting. Um, you know, one particular youth is baking for people at her dad's work. Um, and that's been getting her through lockdown. And she's been saying how encouraging that's been for her. And um, just hearing about all these little stories about how lockdown, even though this one is longer and it is harder um, with restrictions being tighter, um, they're still finding ways to, to encourage each other and to look after each other um, and glorify God through it. Um, so that's, I, I'm, I am gravely missing uh, not seeing them in person. Having those conversations one-on-one -on -one is uh, a huge part of what we do at Youth Group, um, but I'm, I'm still incredibly encouraged by uh, how they're still finding ways to serve God in their own little bubbles. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, yeah. that's such, such great stories. And, you know, I, I wish we could hear more, but obviously we're so, we're so limited in the time we have, that one and a half hours on a Friday night rather than, you know, we don't have supper with them. We don't get to talk to them about life beyond the, the little program we have. So it's just, it's just been nice to be able to hear those kind of stories. Thank you, Brielle. Um, and Anna, lucky last, uh, what have you been encouraged by? Yeah, I, I appreciate how rough it is um, for them to come and sit at a screen for two hours, um, especially for the younger youth that I lead. Mm. Their attention span is harder. But yeah, I've been greatly encouraged and appreciative that not only have they showed up each week consistently, but they've actually been really engaged. And yeah, that's shown in when um, we've done like recaps on what we've learned in Daniel over the term and in our fun trivia night that we did um, in our section on Daniel, I've been mm -hmm. pleasantly surprised by just how much they've taken in and yeah, remembered from all that we've taught them. Yeah. And actually that's why we're doing the book of Daniel in church uh, next, because I heard about how much fun you guys were all having with Daniel that I had to do it for, for our niche sermon series. So uh, look out for that. But uh, thank you all of you for, for sharing those stories uh, to us. Uh, hopefully, you know, as you're watching this, you're encouraged also. Uh, that God has been definitely working in this time in the hearts and minds of our youth. And please be in prayer for our youth as well as our uh, youth leaders. Uh, they've still got more of this Zoom stuff to, to go on for, for a while. Uh, our youth online uh, will be returning again uh, because, of course, we, we can't quite come back yet. Um, Friday the 15th of October will be the first uh, youth online. That coincides with the second week of the school term and uh, God willing, we'll be able to come back as a Friday night youth uh, as usual in the near future. And also just want to let you know uh, that all the leaders uh, will be uh, double vaccinated by the time uh, we come back. Uh, it is very clear that vaccination is the, the best way uh, to mitigate the risk of COVID. And for those who can't be vaccinated at the moment, um, which is many of our children, uh, and some of our youth, it's important to protect them by uh, protecting those who are around them. And so obviously with parents, within family groups, teachers within the school context, and in the church context, I guess, leaders, uh, junior leaders, uh, volunteers, anyone who has contact with our children, uh, yeah, they, they uh, will be uh, double vaccinated. Uh, and so as we come back face to face, uh, yeah, in order to, to love our neighbor, love those who are vulnerable, 
uh, that's what uh, we're making sure will happen. But we'll give you uh, many more updates in the coming weeks after we've been able to d decide on a few things. As always, uh, please feel free to contact me if you'd like to chat about any of this, but hopefully much more will become clear uh, soon. But uh, us youth leaders, we've got to get back to uh, preparing for the next term. And so wish us luck and uh, we'll see you uh, hopefully online on Sunday morning for our online service at 10.30. See you guys later. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.